sailing out here was quite the distance. It's like three days of sailing, right? The trip there is also like, like a portal into a different world. It's a portal from this office and writing papers into the field experience. We look at these lakes as archives of environmental change in the past. Layer by layer of mud, you know, building up at the bottom of these lakes. Try to get that stuff out of these lakes with what can effectively be described as a sewage pipe that you slam into the bottom. In this case, we got like two important cores that were both around 14,000 years long from two lakes that were fed by the same large ice cap, Asgard von on Svalbard. And the reason that we're interested in this ice cap is that glaciers respond to climate change. We know that they melt when it gets warmer. The amount of rain or snowfall also plays a really important role in how they respond to climate change because the more precipitation you, you get, you might get more snowfall. Snowfall like you know counters the impact of melt. So we want to figure out, first of all, how much wetter does the Arctic get? And also like, does this stuff fall as rain or snow? Because if it falls as rain, it's no bueno, it's not good for these glaciers. If it falls as snow, it's good for the glaciers. Then they can actually like, you know, like kind of put, put the brakes on the melt. And we find that this glacier actually survived warmer than present conditions. But we also, um, in my opinion, convincingly demonstrate that this survival is linked to the response of hydroclimate. As sea ice started to retreat, so as the sea ice margin retreated north of Svalbard, you see this intensification of the, of the hydrological cycle. You see that there's evidence that more, more snowfall, more snow melt, and these glaciers likely survived because of that. And this gives us important information because it might suggest that as the Arctic gets warmer and wetter, that these glaciers, they will still melt, you know, they're, they're definitely going to melt because it warms real fast and you need a lot of precipitation to counteract for temperature driven melt, but they might melt a little bit slower. And that is information that's important to prepare for a safe future where people have the time to move to higher grounds.